Chicago, like most big cities, has its fair share of unsolved crime. And in most of these cases, somebody saw or heard something. It could be a suspicious person, a car driving away from the scene, or simply overhearing somebody talking about the case. With your help, we can put these criminals behind bars where they belong. Here in Chicago, we have too many unsolved murders. We need your help. In these cases, the police department is only as strong as the citizens that get involved. Oftentimes, all the detectives need is a tip, a start. Somebody to call in and say, I saw something. Any little information that you know can be the impetus to solve the entire case. On tonight's episode, we'll be taking a look at the case of Alan Williams. On August 18th, 2017, around 1 a.m., Alan, a respected educator and family man, was stopped at an intersection in Gary, Indiana on his way home. It was there that his car was fired upon multiple times, striking and killing Alan in the process. Here's his story. He was born January the 11th, 1989, in Fort Worth, Texas. Then we moved to Naperville, Illinois, and then he grew up in Aurora, Illinois. It was very hyper-like. When he ride his bike, he ride it so fast, you know. Just was a busy baby, always busy, just running around. And I was like, Alan, slow down. He used to tell me, Mama, it's just so many hours in a day. He was always busy. He was the only child, so he loved friends. He loved to play. Oh, he was just so happy all the time. He just loved being with his family, his mom and his dad. He just had to, to do something all the time. So when he didn't have any friends to play with, I was there. And we would have like special days. I would take him shopping, and then we would eat out, and then we would just discuss his day. So that's how I knew what was going on in his life. And he knew what was going on in my life, because we would talk about our day. It was always pleasant and nice to be around and enjoyable. He could draw. He loved video games. He loved to watch sports. In middle school, he played football. Then later in high school, he played basketball. Football he did. He tolerated it, but he loved basketball. Every year, we would wait and see if he would be chosen. And he would call, Grandma, I made it. He made, he made it every year. And it would, we would be so excited. Alan just lit up the room. He may be mad at someone for a while, but then he'll quickly get over it. He wanted everybody to get along. Alan Williams was a responsible, respected family man with a bright future ahead of him. He wanted, he wanted to um, help people. He wanted to always be involved with people. When he met me at a point in my life, I was kind of trying to figure myself out. And he really inspired me, like, to be something else in my life. Like, he encouraged me to be great. I was so proud of him because he always worked to what goals he wanted to achieve, and he was never an idle person. He had uh, graduated with his bachelor's, and he was working or uh, considering going into a master's program at the time. And then he decided to go pursue his bachelor's degree at IU Northwest. And um, after that, he got his master's degree at Indiana Wesleyan in human resource management. So he was always, you know, didn't rest on his laurels. He was just so great to me. He always, he was the sweetest man I ever met. Like he bring me flowers to work. He just was always there if any, any function or any holidays. He was just there for everybody. If he could help in any way, he wanted to be there. If somebody didn't have something, he tried to buy it and give it to him, or take it and food and give it to him, or whatever he could do, he would do it. He had earned multiple degrees and had recently been offered the dean position at a local high school. He loved to work and he loved to work with kids. He had a job working at Camelot Academy. He was a health instructor. 
and then his job phased out. So he was worried about it. And I was like, Alan, you're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. You're smart. He's a go-getter. And sure enough, he got a job. He called and said, Mama, I got the job. And I remember I was so happy. And we went on to celebrate. He took me to the show, and we went to have dinner. And that's the last time I see my son. On August 18, 2017, at approximately 1.16 a.m., Gary police officers were dispatched to the area at 12 and 20 in Utah Street intersection in reference to shots fired. Driver of a vehicle observed a shooting occur, observed the victim flee from the area of the shooting southbound onto Utah Street and observed the suspects flee west on Route 20. Alan Williams drove his vehicle uh, southbound onto Utah Street for approximately a block where his vehicle came to a rest. Officers arrive on the scene. An ambulance was called to the scene. He was transported to Gary North Lake where they began working on him there and ultimately determined after a CAT scan that he needed to be taken to Christ Advocate. 7.40 in the morning, the Gary Police Department received a call from Christ saying that he had died during surgery. He, he was, he was so, he was so good-hearted, so professional, so loving, so giving. And now I'm just lost without him. And I just can't believe this is happening right now. In a heartbeat, tragedy can strike. An accident, a bad medical outcome, or a sudden death. If you or a loved one has been injured and someone else may be at fault, Contact Craig Manorino and Amanda Brassfield today to discuss your legal options. For nearly 20 years, we have represented individuals and their families for injuries caused by carelessness and negligence. And now, we would like to help you. Call Craig and Amanda at 312-782-2573. Let us help you today. On August 18th, 2017, Gary police officers were dispatched to the area of 20 and 12 in Utah Street in reference to shots fired. The 911 caller said that he observed in that intersection a, a white Dodge Challenger being shot at by a maroon sedan. The white Dodge Challenger was observed going south on Utah Street and the uh, suspect vehicle, the maroon sedan, was observed continuing west on 12 and 20, which ultimately turns into Fifth Avenue. Last time I talked to Alan, he was so excited because he had just got a job offer as a dean. So he was working at the Urban League in Chicago part-time with the kids until the school got ready to start in August. And I you know, thought I would see him within a week, but I knew he was probably busy. And I was like, okay, I'm happy for you. He was like, man, let's celebrate. Let's go out and do something. I was like, well, I picked up a shift at work, so I'm not going to be able to. We know that before the shooting occurred, Alan was at a nightclub called The Buzz Box for a couple hours. About 12.46, he sent me a, a song from Kevin Gates because that was his favorite artist. I smiled, I was so happy. And that was the last time I heard from him. It was possible that after he left The Buzz Box, he was headed to another nightclub off of 20 called Dirties. He's likely to have gone down Fifth Avenue from Broadway past Utah Street, which is the entrance into the subdivision where his house is located. And it's possible that he drove past the other nightclub, but that he turned back around and started to head back towards his house. And that when he came to the intersection of Utah Street is when the shooting occurs. His mother called me and she said, um, Misha, I'm nervous. I haven't talked to Alan all day and um, a, detective's, a detective called my phone. He left a message, message about called the homicide. She was saying, Mama, uh, uh, they called me, uh, uh, said they wanted to talk to me about uh, the homicide. I said, why are you concerned about it? I said, why are you so upset? She said, it's homicide. Does that, that doesn't necessarily mean that Alan is dead. Maybe he wanna, they want to ask questions. Alan's vehicle, is on 12 and 20, headed westbound, when he comes up to Utah Street and he stops for the light and he's gonna make a left-hand turn. And the suspect vehicle, according to the 911 caller, is a maroon sedan that pulls up alongside of him. They begin firing shots out of the driver's side of the maroon sedan into the passenger side of Alan Williams' vehicle. 
Alan Williams turns southbound onto Utah Street uh, to get away from what's going on, and the suspect vehicle continues westbound on 1220, which ultimately turns into Fifth Avenue. So I called his phone over and over, and it kept going to voicemail. Then instantly I knew something was wrong, because that's not like him. He calls me all day, every day. His vehicle stops on Utah Street about a block down. He exits the driver's side of his vehicle, leaving his driver's side door wide open. Officers arrive on the scene. They observe the victim's vehicle parked and discover the victim lying on the ground next to his vehicle. They immediately call for medics to come to the scene and they begin securing the scene. A detective called me around seven and he said he couldn't tell me over the phone. He had to talk to the family in person. You know, he said, I gotta talk to you in, the first, in person and I just said I couldn't take this. He was transported to Gary North Lake where they began working on him there and ultimately determined after a CAT scan that he needed to be taken to Christ Advocate. 3.30 in the morning or so is when uh, they transported him to Christ. And at 7.40 in the morning, uh, the Gary Police Department received a call from Christ saying that he had died during surgery. I, I had that gut feeling that it was worst case scenario, but I was trying to think positive. Detective Adams came over there and I told him, sit down, please don't leave. Please tell me it's not true. I just kept quizzing him and quizzing him. Please don't tell me that. No, you don't know, Ellen. They were screaming. I could hear screaming. And I knew then that, you know, something had happened to, to my grandson. And they said he's gone. Ellen's gone. On August 18, 2017, at approximately 1.16 a.m., Gary police officers were dispatched to shots fired in the area of 12 and 20 in Utah Street. The victim uh, was in the intersection getting ready to make a turn onto Utah Street when another vehicle, possibly maroon in color sedan, pulled up and started shooting at his passenger side of his car. The victim continued southbound onto Utah Street while being shot at, and that the suspect vehicle continued west on 12 and 20, ultimately turning into Fifth Avenue. Officers arrived in the area immediately upon receiving the dispatch and located the victim's vehicle about a block down on Utah Street with the driver's side door open and a male's body uh, lying on the ground. Sergeant Greg Wolf was contacted and sent to the scene to do the investigation. I was uh, notified by the patrol sergeant uh, that we had a gunshot victim and I responded first to the hospital. They told him that Alan Williams was in poor shape and that he was at uh, Broadway Methodist North Lake. I made contact with the emergency room staff and the attending physician and he had told me that um, Alan had received three gunshot wounds. Sergeant Wolf ended up going into the trauma room. I was able to speak with him briefly. Um, during our conversation, I was trying to inquire if he knew who shot him. He was able to confirm that it was likely a maroon sedan that shot at his vehicle. This can't be happening. You, no, it's not my Alan, it's not my baby. Don't tell me that. Please don't tell me that's not true. Oh, my baby. Oh, my Alan. I just didn't have no idea how it could be. You know, I, that wasn't the farthest thing from my mind. I'm just, I just can't go on without Alan. I'm so, so sad. That was my best friend. When I arrived at the crime scene, there was multiple, um, what appeared to be rifle rounds in the street. We know that the shooting occurred in the intersection of 12 and 20 in Utah Street. Just south of that location where all those casings were uh, discovered, 
Alan Williams' car was also discovered. The driver door was open. The glass was shot out of both doors. The shots all came on the passenger side of the vehicle in excess of 20 times. He was telling, tell, trying to tell me that it was mistaken identity with Alan Carr. Alan Williams' car really stands out. He had these big rims on his car, and it was a Challenger. And there's other cars in Gary that resemble this car. It's possible that somebody thought that Alan Williams was somebody else. Due to the direction he was traveling, I decided to go to the local businesses nearby. I had observed uh, video footage of the victim's vehicle pull into the gas station at one point. Um, and then shortly thereafter, uh, the vehicle pulls out with another vehicle behind it. This just don't make any sense to me that they would take somebody like him out of this world. He was such a good person. All Alan wanted to do was to just be responsible, a responsible young man. I mean, Alan Williams was just a school teacher that was going out to have a drink. To make matters worse, later that day, individuals broke into Alan's new house, stole numerous possessions, and ransacked the entire place. And then that night, they broke into his house and stole all his new furniture, ramshacked his house that he worked so hard for. It was empty. They had took everything out, stripped it and took the furnace and, and some appliances, his bed, everything. I was notified uh, by the same patrol sergeant that called me out for the scene and he had advised me that he got a call from Christ Advocate that Mr. Williams had passed away during surgery. I, I just can't, just, I don't understand it. It's just too much. Alan was far from a criminal. He was very encouraging and inspired to others. He wanted everybody to be united. He paid his bills. He was kind hearted. He went to church. He loved his family and he loved his friends. That was Alan. I'm Lisa Guillen from Case Files Chicago, and we like to feature your case on our show. If you know of an unsolved homicide from the Chicago area, our team wants to help you close the case. Please visit our website at www.casefileschicago.com. While you're there, you can also view our database of unsolved murders that need your assistance. Only by working together can we solve these crimes and help heal our city. Thank you, Chicago, and stay safe. In a heartbeat, tragedy can strike. An accident, a bad medical outcome, or a sudden death. If you or a loved one has been injured and someone else may be at fault, contact Craig Manorino and Amanda Brassfield today to discuss your legal options. For nearly 20 years, we have represented individuals and their families for injuries caused by carelessness and negligence. And now, we would like to help you. Call Craig and Amanda at 312-782-2573. Let us help you today. On August 18, 2017, at approximately 1.16 a.m., we received a 911 call in reference to shots being fired in a gunshot victim located at US 20 in Utah Street in Gary, where a victim was shot in his vehicle. When officers arrived on scene, they located the victim who was shot multiple times. He was subsequently transported to Methodist North Lake Hospital in Gary, and he was identified later as Alan Williams. It would mean a lot to me if they could find out who did this to him. Who would want to kill Alan? If anybody was angry with Alan, whoever did it, if they had just gave him a few, few days or a, a little bit more time, they would have been his friend, because that's how he was. He loved people. He wanted friends, just friends. This was my only child. My first husband and I waited seven years to have Alan. Seven years. He was taken from me. Alan Williams was a good guy. He was 28 years old, young man, just really getting started in his life and finding his place in this world. They took this awesome person out of this world who didn't deserve this. He did not deserve this. That was my love, my grandson. We were really close. We did all kind of things together. Whatever it was, if you wanted to take his car, you could have said, get out and then take the car, but you didn't have to kill him. 
If you wanted to rob him, you could have robbed him, but you have to shoot him. I mean, what sick person would do that? Would take a, a human life like that? Alan uh, was you know, heavily involved in academics, did his time in college, got a job as a teacher, and then ultimately you know, was just receiving a job as the dean of students here in Chicago. I want to see justice done for my child, and I'm not going to rest until it's done. I just would like to say if anybody have any information, even if you call anonymously, like, justice needs to be served here. I would like for them to call the detective. They can call anonymously. Just call and let us know who it is. His family is in deep need of closure in this case. People need to come forward and, and uh, give us the leads that we need to bring closure to this family and put this person in jail who did this to Alan Williams. Nobody deserves to die like this. It's just a shame that this is going on. You did not have to take our Alan from this family. This was our pride and joy. We would ask that anybody with any information regarding this case is little of information. You may not think it's important, but something small may be important to the case. Uh, we certainly want to close this case and find the suspect who killed Mr. Williams. We ask that if you have any information regarding any suspect, any rumors, uh, the suspect vehicle of that Burgundy Buick, anything along those lines, please contact the Lake County Metro Homicide Unit. Please, if anybody know who hurt my child, please let me know. Please come forward, please come forward. I hurt so bad. If you have any leads about the Allen Williams homicide, you can call the Metro Homicide Unit at 219-755-3855, 219-755-3855, and speak to any investigator in the unit, or you can call specifically for me, Detective Sergeant Jeremy Ogden. And it's important to understand that no piece of information is too small. The smallest of things could solve this case. This family deserves justice. So many young people have been murdered, and it's just unnecessary. Just hope this will help. And I just want him to know that he's loved and he would never be forgotten. I don't know how much I loved him. All his friends know how much I loved him. Everybody know how much I loved that baby. My whole world was heaven. He was my life. The cases featured on tonight's episode remain unsolved and we need your help. If you have any information on tonight's episode or any of the cases featured on the show, please give the detectives a call. We need our communities to come together so we can take back our streets and make our neighborhoods safe again.